Hello guys, I am back from another video and today we talking about what if Deku was the only boy with the quote unquote quirk. So, in the last video we talked about how, so, after, you know, Izuku was fucked over, I'm just gonna be skipping some of the other stuff. I mean, most of the episode was about Izuku, you know, getting fucked, and I literally mean getting fucked in the, you know, sexual way if you get what I mean. So, yeah, after, you know, a night of getting fucked over by both, you know, half a class 1A and class 1B, he would basically, you know, tell everybody that they should get out of his room, except for Ida, except for, Ida for obvious reasons, as they would basically get ready to eat breakfast. The rest of the students there, including Izumi, saw that every single girl, like, half a class 1A, which most of them, they didn't know that they were, you know, like, they checked their rooms and they didn't know that they were there. Like, they were not there at all, so they thought, oh, they must be going to um, do some exercise or something. But when they saw that, you know, half a class of an A is basically, you know, getting out of the room of Izuku and, you know, Ida, they thought, oh no, please don't tell me. And they would see that class, like, half of class 1B is also leaving as well. And they would wonder, what the fuck just happened? And, you know, um, a certain girl by the name of, you know, um, Kaminari would basically tell them about Izuku having a, let's just say, above average dick. Let's just say that. And it was, and she would basically describe it, and, you know, let's just say Zumi was not appreciating it. Like, she was not appreciating it at all, saying that it's a bit weird talking about, to, you know, her brother's dick like that. So, yeah, after Izuku and also, you know, um, Ida freshen up, they would basically start to have breakfast. During breakfast, they would get a knock at the door, and it turns out, well, it was Izuku and Izumi's mother, Inko Midoriya. She would basically see Izuku once again, as she was pretty happy that Izuku's okay. But when she saw that, you know, Baka was trying to talk to her, let's just say she was a bit pissed at her. Because remember, she was one of the reasons that, you know, Izuku somewhat committed suicide and basically, you know, turned him into this. So, after, you know, a while of talking and basically, you know, Izuku telling her that she, like, he basically forgave her and also accidentally slipping out that, you know, him and Bako are somewhat in a relationship, well, let's just say, Ego fainted. Yeah, let's just say after hearing that, she was a bit, you know, um, you know, let's just say, you know, um, like, sensory, like, I meant sensory overload, let's just say that. So, Izumi would basically tell the rest of her classmates to basically bring, you know, Inko to her room to basically rest up. Well, they saw that, well, um, Aizawa basically came out of nowhere, basically telling Izuku to go talk to her about something important. So, when Izuku was with, like, when she was, you know, when Izuku was alone with her, apparently, apparently, um, they found out about, you know, the whereabouts of, like, you know, MASH. Apparently, MASH has been planning on making herself into a beast of something, but when, you know, um, Jack heard that, Jack would basically tell Izuku to basically contact Principal Nezu and, you know, the Hero Commission about this, because apparently this beast of something, or at least, um, that information was pretty important and somewhat scary to him. Hearing that, you know, Jack is a bit, you know, afraid and somewhat, you know, scared, well, was concerning to him. So yeah, after telling, you know, um, after, you know, being told of this, Izuku would basically get ready to tell, you know, um, Aizawa about that as well. And that is where we basically ended off that episode. So yeah, so, let's talk about what happens next then. So, Izuku would basically tell, you know, um, you know, Aizawa about that, and also Jack basically comes out of, you know, Izuku out of nowhere, as, you know, um, Aizawa would basically inform, um, Principal Nezu about this, including the Hero Commission. So, after Izuku told him about that, Izuku would get ready to leave to go to the, you know, to the Hero Commission's office. Ida would basically join with him, including, you know, Bakugo, for obvious reasons, because they think it's probably really important as well. So, Izuku was wondering why, you know, Jack was weird, like, why is Jack worried about it? I mean, it's about, you know, Mash Cure Light, but it isn't that dangerous, 
right? So, Izuku would basically go to the, you know, Hero Commission's office with Principal Nezu and, you know, the rest, and they would make it there as the Hero Commission would ask why did Izuku basically, you know, call them here. As Jack would basically come out and said about the whole information that they were told by, you know, Aizawa. Aizawa would say, yeah, why are you so concerned about that? As he would basically look at, you know, Principal, like, you know, look at Principal Nezu as he would say this. Well, this beast of something thing is known as the beast of humanity, or she wants to become a beast of humanity. As one of them would say this. That doesn't seem that bad, said one of the Hero Commission members, as he would say this. Even though it sounds like a beast of humanity, sounds like it's, you know, all about protecting humanity, it's the complete opposite. He would basically say that, as one of them would say this. Excuse me, what? As, well, he would say this. Yeah, beasts of humanity are mostly used for destroying, and I mean destroying anything in their path. And what do I mean by this? Well, just imagine... You're like an ant, and the beasts of humanity are like humans in comparison. They just destroy anything, and and their only purpose is to destroy humanity itself. So, basically, well, wait for a second. <laughs> so basically, Mash is planning on turning herself into a beast of humanity to, I don't know, maybe destroy the entire world or something. As after hearing this, the Hero Commission would start to sweat a little as they would ask, so is there a way to stop her? As Izuku would say this, I don't know, maybe ask Jack. As Jack would say this, yes, there is a way, but we need to find her first. As one of them would say this, specifically one of the Hero Commission members, sorry about that, um, I sort of ate earlier, so I might be still a little bit gassy. <laughs> so, um, one of the Hero Commission members would say this, maybe we can contact the military, or maybe we can contact some other heroes from other countries. As, you know, Jack would say this, that definitely seems like an idea, but please do not bring in the British. As one of them would say this, but why? As Izuku would just look at her as he would say, isn't that obvious? As they would realize that remember, he's Jack the Ripper and... <laughs> you basically get it. So, everybody would just ask, yeah, probably yeah. <laughs> so, one of them would say this, specifically a member of, you know, the Hero Commission. So, these beasts of humanity, are they really that dangerous? As he would say this, specifically, you know, Jack. Obviously, they can cause serious damage to the world. In fact, I remember this organization back in the day. They were called, like, the, um, Caldea Organization or something of that sort. Um, I think I remember them being quite powerful back in the day, but they shortly dissolved. I only remembered about them because they have the purpose of basically protecting humanity by using servants just like us, but unlike, you know, Izuka over here, we're not fused with any person or anything of that sort. As one of the Hero Commission members would say this, I see, so these beasts of humanity, so, um, as he would say this, yeah, they're really that dangerous. Even a simple quirk user, or any type of quirk user, like for example, like All Might, would be ants compared to them as everybody would start to sweat a little bit even more after hearing that, as he would say this. Yeah, you should probably bring in some like, oh, I don't know, some high-level artillery or something. Or we should probably find Bash Kira like immediately. As one of the Hero Commission members would say this. Yeah, we should. After hearing that, we should probably do that now. As one of them would say this. Sure, let's do this. As they would basically tell them to, you know, they would basically be dismissed, as everybody would basically get out of there, as, you know, one of the Hero Commission members would basically ask Izuku to get ready, because they're gonna contact them in case of, you know, finding, you know, Mash Hero Light so they can stop him. But for now, they're gonna be recruiting some heroes to basically, you know, take down Mash Hero Light in case if she becomes, you know, that beast of humanity that, you know, Jack was, t you know, telling Izuku. So, yeah. So. After telling them that, they would basically start to leave. So, as Izuku is basically, you know, leaving with, you know, um, you know, his entourage, they would go back to, you know, UA, as currently, All Might was contacted by the Hero Commission earlier, and, you know, after they, you know, basically left, you know, 
um, the Hero Commission would basically tell All Might about this, as All Might would be terrified knowing this. So, yeah, so, as everybody's, you know, or at least most of the heroes there, like, for example, All Might, the number two hero Endeavor, being told of this, they would basically start, you know, get ready in case of this happening. So, a few days have gone by as Izuku is basically training to get ready for this, you know, um, this challenge to basically, you know, defeat Mash Keolite in case of her basically transforming into a, you know, a beast of humanity. As Jack would say this, Hey, Izuku. As Izuku would say this, what is it, Jack? As he would basically bring in Kukulane and also Lancelot. As they would basically say this, So, in case of Mash, Kirillite ever to become a, you know, a beast of humanity, I want you to you to use this. As when Izuku heard this, you know, plan, Izuku would say this. Wait, you so you're saying? As he would say this. Yes. This is very, very important. In case of she becomes that monstrous beast. So, I want you to keep in mind. We care for you, just like family. As Izuku would say this. Sure, I promise. As after hearing this, because I'm going to be keeping it vague for now, they would basically hug as, you know, um, Lancelot is basically, you know, growling, even though, you know, even though it sounds like growl, like growling and, you know, sounds like, you know, him saying, Arthur! <laughs> yeah. Izuku can somewhat understand it, a little bit. It's like, um, it's like me. Um, even though I'm Filipino, I barely know my own fucking language. <laughs> I think the reason why is because I was, uh, you know, I was raised in like a, um, in a somewhat, um, you know, English household. What do I mean by this? Well, I literally watched like English cartoons my whole life, so I barely know Filipino at, uh, at all. Somewhat. I still learn how to speak Tagalog, and I mean a little, and also Filipino a little bit, so... <laughs> Just imagine like that. So, Izuku is basically, you know, now fully ready, as they were basically contacted by the Hero Commission. The Hero Commission would basically tell them that they found some information about, the, you know, the whereabouts of Mash Kirlite. Apparently, Mash Kirlite is now living in a, um, in a secluded island, where, you know, some reports saying about, you know, missing, you know, people, and also some missing, you know, wait for a second. Uh, missing shipments of like, you know, um, artifacts, like for example, ancient artifacts for, you know, for, um, ex I meant museum, god damn it, oh, what the fuck is English? So, after being told of this, well, let's just say, you know, currently, Kukulain is basically worried because he knows what is this type of ritual, and it's not really that good, <laughs> if you get what I mean. So, as Izuku was told of this, nearby, Bako was hearing all of this as Bako would basically tell the others. All of the girls were basically there, including Class 1B members, which were a part of, you know, mm, Izuku's harem, let's just say that. As all of them would basically start to think, as Todoroki would say this. So, Izuku is going on this mission to basically stop this mash cure light from basically destroying the world and basically turning, in, turning herself into a beast of humanity? Is that right, Bakugo? Ah, she would say this. Yes, but we need to help Izuku. I mean, he did help us. As one of them would say this, specifically, you know, Kirishima. Yeah, she, like, he basically helped us, right? They would basically look at each other as all of them would start to remember about the times where they basically, you know, um, where Izuku helped them. I mean, some of them were not really, you know, not really, like, actually from this story, but still, just imagine it like that. So, as, you know, one of them specifically, you know, um, Mineta would say this, yeah, we should go help him. I mean, I'm still a bit pervy, but, I mean, I still have standards, she would basically say, as all of them would agree, as Izuku, currently still, you know, talking to the Hero Commission, would be approached by Mineta, as Izuku would say this, um, wait for a second, guys, so, he would basically, you know, cover his phone as he would say this. What is it, Mineta? I'm not really here for your, you know, your perverted jokes right now. As she would say this. Oh, don't worry, we're not, 
you know, I'm not really here to talk about, you know, hehe, <laughs> the fun stuff. She would basically start to laugh a little bit as she would say this. Uh, anyway, um, we need to talk. As Izuku would say this. Ah, <sighs> fine, I'll talk later, but first I'm talking to Hero Commission. So, after a while of basically talking to the Hero Commission, he would basically go into the living room as he would see the rest of his, you know, um, little harem. Actually, not even the little. It's more like a lot. Like, there's a lot of girls in it. <laughs> and it's not even, and it's not even half of it. There's literally, like, all for one part of this as well. <laughs> oh, God. So, as Izuku basically sits down, Paco would say this. So, Izuku, we know about your little mission of yours, as he would say this. So, you know, as she would say this. Yeah. I just wanted to say is, I just hope you be careful. Including you. As she would basically look at, you know, well, um, four eyes, aka, you know, Ida, as she would say this. Yeah? As she would say this. Yeah. I want you to be careful. We do care for you, even though I don't really care for you, four eyes. I mean, she would basically look at Paco as she would say this. Alright, I know, I know, as she would say this. But still, you're her master. I meant his master. Or whatever the fuck. <laughs> You're still her ma- like, his master, so... I just want to- s I just want to say this. Just be careful. After all, Izuku does love you, including us. We all love you, Izuku. As all of them would agree, as Monoma would say this. Yeah, Izuku. I mean, she would basically start to flick her hair as she would say this. After all, you are going to be my husband when we become older. As they would basically look at Monoma as, you know... Um, Ida would basically say this. It's not really the time now, Monoma. As she would say this. Yeah, <laughs> she would basically start to, you know, scratch the back of her, you know, neck. As Isuku could say this. Thank you, guys. As, you know, they would get a talk, they would be get a call from the Hero Commission as Izuku would basically answer it. But apparently, the Hero Commission already, you know, told them that it's finally time for him to finally go towards that island. With the rest of the heroes there. And unfortunately, um, some of the, like, the heroes in training, like, for example, you know, Bakko, many others, except for, you know, Ida for obvious reasons, because remember, she is, you know, the master of, you know, of Izuku, and also Izumi, because she does have one for all, she would also be joining this as well. So, after being told of this, Izuku would basically tell them goodbye. Because it's finally time for him to stop, you know, time for him to stop, you know, wait for a second. It's finally time for him to stop Mash Cure Light once and for all. So, Izuku would be on a helipad nearby to the, you know, to the Hero Commission's office. Not technically, it's more like the Hero Commission's, you know, military. Where several heroes were there and they basically, you know, basically looking at Izuku as... Izuku would basically look at, you know, um, Endeavor. Endeavor is basically looking at him as Endeavor seems a little bit, you know, let's just say a bit weird lately when, you know, she's around him. Ever since the whole, you know, um, mission for Izuku's rescue, uh, what do I mean by this? Well, the rescue for, you know, Izuku being captured by All for One and being forced to marry her, well, she sort of became a little bit more protective, let's just say that. So, um, currently, um, <laughs> Endeavor is basically now, ah, oh, sorry about that, wait for a second. Currently, Endeavor is basically holding him by the, you know, is basically holding him like a fucking, <laughs> like a fucking, like, kid with this, you know, um, stuffed toy. As Izuku is wondering in his mind, what the fuck is going on? As Ida is basically telling her to basically get off Izuku, as she would say this. Don't worry, I'm just keeping Izuku safe. After all, he's basically our, you know, our, um, what do you actually call that? Is after all our chump card. As one of them would say this, specifically, you know, uh, Izumi. Hey, um, Endeavor, please do not, you know, touch my brother like that. Ah, uh, she would say this. Wait, you're, you're her brother? She would basically look at Izuku and then looks back at, you know, <laughs> looks back at Ida. Ah, she would say this. Yeah, let's just say my hair is a bit different ever since the, you know, um, transference of me and my servant, so, as uh, she would say this, oh, I see, 
So, after, you know, looking at Izuku once again, she would basically say this. Anyway, you should probably get ready now. So, after a while, basically, you know, waiting, they would basically start to fly off towards that island. So, when they're basically flying towards that island, they would see a large storm brewing. As Izuku would start to feel, including, you know, Ida would start to feel that this place seems to be filled with so much energy. More specifically, mana. And I mean a concentrated, like, plume of, like, mana is basically forming from the center of the island. After, the, after they basically arrive at the coast, they would basically start to get off and start going towards the middle. They would see a large, you know, summoning circle, um, basically happening. As they would see Saber there basically, um, chained up, as Saber would say this. Master, why are you doing this? We only, we only joined you. I mean, I only joined you because I wanted to save the world. Why are you doing this? As she would say this. Well, isn't that obvious? I want my revenge. As she would say this. I'm tired of waiting and waiting of finally taking my revenge on those damn so-called mages. Those mages that tortured me and turned me into this. As she would basically start to look. As she would look angry at, you know, you know, she would look angrily at, you know, um, Saber. As Saber would say this. But Master, you said that you wanted to turn me into a servant. Your servant, so you can... As she would say this. Shut up! As she would look really feral as she would say this. Now, I'm gonna turn myself into a beast of humanity so I can finally take my revenge on those bastards. And I will get it, no matter what. As she would say this. Now, you better shut up. And now, let me show you why they call me the disaster. As she would basically start, you know, start doing the ritual. As she would start uh, creating some powders using some of those, you know, artifacts. Like, for example, a artifact resembling a piece of a, you know, a piece of a Mayan, like, um, structure. As she would start to grab some vials of some sort of, like, liquid. As she would start to pour it into a, um, mortar and pestle. As when Izuku saw this, well, let's just say, you know, Jack is a bit worried. As Jack would basically tell, you know, everybody to get ready. And so, they would basically charge in. Every single hero there would basically charge at, you know, um, wait for a second, charge at MASH, as MASH would basically start, you know, slash at everybody. As she would say this, what the? As she would say this, why you? As she would basically grab her, you know, shield, or more specifically her shield blade, I meant shield blade, I meant shield blade, for God's sakes. As she would basically charge in and basically start fighting them. Izuku, meanwhile, would basically see that, you know, the chain, you know, Saber, would basically, you know, be, like, she would be, and not she, I meant he, would be looking at him, as Izuku would say this, what happened to you, as he would say this, it seems that Master, or at least my Master, has gone mad, as he would say this, so, now you know why, now you know what I feel, as she, I meant he would say this. <laughs> I guess so. As he would basically, you know, look at Izuku as he would say this. So you're gonna get me out? As Izuku would say this. Obviously. As Izuku would basically grab Erendite and basically, you know, break his sword, like, break his chains. As Izuku would start to escape with, you know, well, with, um, wait, escape with Saber. When he's about to escape with Saber, well, Mash would look over, Ash would say this. Oh no, you don't! As she would basically grab some sort of like weapon resembling you know, like the spear of, you know, Lancer, as you would throw it at him, as Izuku would basically dodge the attack. But for, you know, um, Saber, Saber would basically, you know, um, would be thrown, um, a few, um, miles away. Not really miles, more like centimeters away. As she would say this, Don't you dare get out of these bindings! After, you know, Mash said that, she would start to use a special looking wand. As she would basically grab, you know, um, Lancer, not Lancer, I meant Saber, goddammit. Uh, she would basically grab Saber and puts him back into the, you know, into the large magic circle. I meant magic circle, goddammit, my, uh, why is my grammar sounding so bad lately, god. Ugh, 
fucking damn it, English. <laughs> so, Izuku would basically saw like Izuku would basically see this as he would basically charge in once again to basically try and free him, using erudite as he would basically try to crack these chains. But these chains seem to be much more stronger. As Mash is basically finding off some of the heroes, Endeavor would start creating, you know, blasts of fire, and she would basically create a, you know, a spear arm made out of fire, as she would basically throw it at, you know, Mash. Mash would basically block it, as she would see right behind her was, you know, um, All Might and Izumi, getting ready to, you know, punch her with a Detroit Smash. As when she did, she would basically block it with her shield, as she would basically, you know, um, you know, be pushed away a little bit farther away, like a few blocks away, as she would say this, not enough time, as she would basically look um, look at her, you know, little like um, station where she's basically, you know, making that weird looking ritual, as she would say this, I guess that's enough, she would basically grab some of these, you know, items and basically throw it at the summoning circle, as she would basically create a little like, you know, um, bounded field. If you don't know what is a bounded field, well, just imagine a place where it's basically like a, um, a shield for mages. It's basically like a force field. As when the, you know, when the shield was basically erected, not in that way, Izuku would basically try to, you know, smash it with the rest of the heroes, but to no prevail. As she would basically start, you know, starts the summoning ritual, or should I say, the ritual itself. She would basically say these words. Um, let's just say some random words about darkness, blah blah blah. But, after a while of saying it, she would start to change. Her body would start to, you know, glow a little bit, as several red tattoos would start to covering her, as it seems to be originating from her, you know, command seal. The command seal would basically disappear, now transforming into several large tattoos, almost seeming like, you know, red electricity basically around her. Her eyes would start to glow a dark red from her, you know, instead of her usual, like, purplish. Her hair would start to elongate, as her clothing would start to change as well. She would change as her spear would change. Like, she would basically gain a spear, a red spear, almost seemingly to resemble, you know, um, Guy Bolga, but a larger and much more, you know, pointier version of it. She would start to, you know, ride on something starts to grow and grow and then it bursts out of the you know bounded field as it transforms resembling a large serpent like monster with you know amphibious type you know attributes after seeing this easy could say um jack what is this as jack would say this it seems that the beast of humanity has been awakened beast eight leviathan as they would see the large serpent basically coiling around Mash, as she would say this. <laughs> now, time for the sacrifice. As she would basically point her spear at, you know, at, you know, Saber, as he would say this. No, no, as he would basically start to run away, as he would basically start to, you know, use his, you know, little knives to basically, you know, propel him away. But, unfortunately, the serpent is much faster, aka Leviathan. As Leviathan would eat him. After eating him, he would start to gain the attributes of, you know, Saber, including the attributes of, you know, Roland and also, you know, um, you know, wait for a second, Sigurd. As when it finally changes, Izuku would just say, What the fuck is that thing? As he would say this, That's Beast 8, Leviathan, one of the beasts of humanity and said to be the, the most scariest out of all of them. As she would say this, Now, I shall finally get my revenge! But before that, how should destroy you? You, you traitor, and then the rest of your damn family, or your friends or whatever the fuck you call them. As she would say this, Now, DIE! As she would start to create lightning out of her fingertips, as she would basically throw the spear, as the spear would basically be plunged into the ground, as a large explosion would happen. As everybody is basically flying around, everybody would be knocked out, except for Yuzuku and, you know, um, wait for a second, Ida. As Ida would say this, Izuku, as Izuku would say this, um, 
Ida, are you okay? I should say this. No, I'm fine. Uh, as Izuku would say this. Be careful, you're not fine. You're... As she would say this. Don't worry. I'm fine. As Izuku would say this. Mash. I think I need to do this. As she would say this. What? As he would say this. I want you to use your command seal. As she would say this. My command seal? As he would say this. Yes. I want you to use your command seal to make me stronger. And I'll use a special ability that was, you know, told about by... Told about by... Wait for a second. By Jack. After hearing this, she would say this. Um, sure. As Izuka would basically start, you know, go in front of her. As Izuka would basically walk away, as she would say this. Now, by my command seal, I order you. Izuku, Midoriya. I give you my power. I give you my strength. I want you to save this world from this human, like the, from this beast of humanity, and save it, no matter what. I shall give you my strength, my power, my identity. Please, save us. As her commands, you would basically, you know, would basically, you know, um, somewhat disappear, like, the like the top part. After Izuku gains the boost of power. He would basically start to, you know, feel much more stronger. As Jack would basically say this, including Kukulain and Lancelot. They would say, Are you ready? As Izuku would say this, Yes, I'm ready. As Izuku would start to change as well. So let's go back to a little flashback, shall we? So we go to a little flashback as during when he was basically talking to Jack about this mysterious power, Izuku would say this, So you're telling me in case of the the beast of humanity being summoned and even being from mash i should as he would say this yes we have this special ability but but at the cost of that we'll disappear all of us Hulane, me and lancelot will disappear but it will give you even more powerful abilities and even giving you a quirk as he would say this, a quirk? As he would say this, yes, I guess you can say that. It's basically now a part of your um, DNA at that point when you use that ability. And it's called... And it's called Alternative Metamorphosis, or Metamorphosis. As he would say this, so it basically, in, in a way, it basically makes you disappear, turning you or basically bringing you back to the throne of heroes, but in exchange it gives you, it gives me power. As he would say this, yes, but you only need to use this in case if the beast of humanity has been summoned. As Izuku would say this, but, but I don't want to lose you guys. You're basically like family. As he would say this, don't worry. It will eventually happen. After all, after what. We were told by the Hero Commission, especially by Aizawa, we need to do this. After all, it's the greater good. Right? As Izuku would say this, but, but, as he would say this, stop! I know that you're kind of scared about losing us. After all, we basically give you our powers, but don't worry, we'll be here. As Jack would basically know, um, point at his, you know, chest, as he would say this. We'll be here right beside you. And, besides, you'll be given power even though we're going to be gone. And gone back to the hero, to the, um, to one of heroes. But don't worry. We'll always be here. Got it? As he would basically smile, as Lancelot would say this. Duh. Duh. <laughs> Just imagine it sounding like that. As, you know, Kukling would say this. Yeah, kid. Don't worry about it. And besides, maybe drink for me. Maybe it will be... <laughs> maybe it will be like a celebration. Even if it might happen. <laughs> and, by the way, in case you get married, maybe name, your maybe name your kid after me. Got it? As he would say this. Right, Kukulain. And you, Jack... That's a lot. I promise. I'll do it in case... If that beast of humanity were to happen. 
I'll gladly do it. So, we go back. So, Izuku is finally transforming as his body would start to change. As all of his armor would basically, you know, start to become a little bit lighter. Just imagine, you know, um, um, Lancelot, you know, Saber, and, you know, and while he's basically transforming, his claws would basically disappear. And in exchange, it will basically, you know, change Gaibolga into a much more stronger version. And what do I mean by this? Well, yeah, apparently in the Fate lore, um, you know, um, Kukulain's, you know, Gaibolga was actually a, you know, a much more Celtic version of its original form, more specifically, Gungnir, aka the Spear of the God Odin. So, when, you know, he basically starts transforming into his, you know, um, heroic, met or his heroic metamorphosis, the Spear would start, you know, um, peel, almost like it's molting, as it would finally change into Gungnir. And finally, Jack the Ripper would basically exchange for his, you know, existence, basically turning back, or basically, you know, basically going back to the Throne of Heroes, he would basically give him a brand new ability, back when he was still an assassin, or at least in his assassin version, giving him Maria, Maria the Ripper. As when Izuku finally changes, his eyes would start to change as well. One of his eyes, instead of being blood red, would become a bluish color instead, as his markings would basically disappear as well. After fully changing, he would say this, Whoa, I feel stronger. Much more. As he would realize that, you know, all of his, you know, all three of his heroic spirits are gone. They already said goodbye in his mind, so Izuku would say this, Oh, yeah. He would basically smile and cry a little bit as he would say this, but either way, I will not let this go to waste. I will not your I will not let your sacrifice be in vain. As you would basically wield up Gungnir, as you would say this, Mash Kirillite! As she would basically look at Izuku in his new, you know, heroic metamorphosis form. As he would say this, I mean she. Oh, it seems that you finally transformed into your true self, Izuku Midoriya. As he would say this, yes. Now, let's do this. As you'd basically bring up Gungnir and also put, you know, um, his knives in one hand and finally, um, Arendite in his mouth. As you would say this, let's end this. As Leviathan would basically scream, as Leviathan would basically start to charge over there, charging towards Izuku. Wait for a second. As Leviathan would basically charge over there towards Izuku, Izuku would dodge the attack as Izuku would basically slam, you know, Gungnir into one of the scales of, you know, one of the, you know, sides of, well, Leviathan. Leviathan would start to feel the pain of, you know, Gungnir. Because in, you know, because Leviathan is basically like a, you know, a Christianized version of basically the World Serpent, aka, you know, um, what's his fucking name? God damn it. The World Serpent Jormungandr. So, it's pretty much effective against, you know, you know, anything that's basically serpent, like, serpent related. So, Izuku would basically slam his spear into, you know, um, into Leviathan, as Leviathan would start to, you know, shoot out Hellfire, because, you know, remember, he's basically, you know, Leviathan is based off, you know, Leviathan from, you know, from the Christian Bible, and apparently he was also represented as the entrance of Hell, apparently, even being called the Hellmouth. So, he would basically start shooting out flames as Izuku would basically dodge the attacks. Izuku would basically grab, you know, Erendite as he would basically slam it into the face of, you know, of, you know, of Leviathan. Leviathan would get a large scar on his face as Leviathan would scream out in pain. As when, you know, Mash Kirillite saw this, she would say, What? I thought the beast came I thought it was a, you know, I thought a beast came God fucking damn. Wait a minute. I thought a beast can, a beast of humanity can, <sighs> fuck, oh, I'm just super excited, so, um, I thought a beast, a beast of humanity can be defeated, can't be defeated, but this, this, as she would basically become mad, I should say this, alright, as she would basically 
go towards the ground. Ash should say this. I will not let you ruin my damn dream. Ash would basically charge in with her spear in hand. Ash would basically, you know, slam it into Izuku's side. Izuku would basically, though, disappear, turning into a cloud of darkness. Ash would say this. What? A clone? As Izuku would basically charge behind her, as he would say this. Hey. As he would basically slam his sword into, you know, into Mashkira Light's back. After, you know, getting slammed in the back, she would basically be, you know, flying away. As Izuku would see Leviathan, you know, basically over him once again, he would shoot out fire out of his mouth. Izuku would basically, you know, um, block the attack by slicing through the fire like a madman. <laughs> basically using Erendite as a, you know, like, just imagine one of those, like, typical anime scenes where there's, like, a rush of fire and... The, the main character would basically slice the fire in half of the sword. Just imagine it like that. So, after doing that, he would see this. Well then, it's time to end this. As his sword would basically, you know, start to glow. As he would say this. Erendite! Overload! As Izuku would basically activate its, you know, true purpose. A sword of protection. As a, you know, a projection of, you know, Vivian, a.k.a. Um, the Lady of the Lake, if you don't know, well, Lancelot, this other name, or more specifically his last name, Lancelot Duloc, which means, you know, Lancelot of the Lake, um, it basically comes from, you know, how Lancelot was, you know, raised by the Lady of the Lake, so, Izuku would basically, you know, summon in the Lady of the Lake, where the Lady of the Lake would basically create two swords, one was, you know, Erendite itself, and the other, Excalibur, as you'd as this projection of, you know, Vivian would basically, you know, charge towards, you know, you know, Leviathan as it slices off his head with two slashes from both Erendite and Excalibur. After doing that, well, you probably know this, as Leviathan would be killed. As the heroes would basically wake up from their, you know, knockout, they would see that, you know, Leviathan was defeated by Izuku in his new form. As one of them would say this, specifically, you know, Izumi. Izumi, what ha- I meant, Izuku, what happened to you? As Izuku would say this. Hmm. I guess you can say that I got a new power. Hmm. After saying that, one of them would say this. Izuku, watch out! said, you know, um, Ida, as Izuku would basically jump away, seeing that, you know, an angry-ass Mash is basically, you know, looking at him, as he would say this, This isn't fair! This isn't fair! How the hell did you kill a beast of humanity? I thought they were supposed to be the strongest creatures ever. They should not be in the- They should have- yeah. She seems to be super mad, and almost seems to be, you know, fully crazy, as she would say this, I, I, as she would basically grab her, you know, spear, as she would say this, I, I, as she would basically start charging towards Izuku, as she would say this, you'll die, as Izuku would say this, hmm, instant mistake, as Izuku would basically, you know, um, disappear out of nowhere, as she would say this, what the, where the hell are you, where the, where, where, as she seems to be almost fully crazy, as Izuku would say this. I am the flames. I am death. As the world would start to change, or at least in her eyes, she would see that she's in a, you know, a rundown district of London. More specifically, the Whitechapel district. After saying the final lines of his, you know, noble phantasm, he would scream out, Maria the Ripper! As Izuku would basically charge out of nowhere from, you know, a lamppost, or at least a lamppost illusion because, you know, why not? Because this is technically an illusion that's being projected by Izuku. As Izuku would basically slice off the head of Mash. After, after basically, you know, after basically lopping off her head, she would be defeated. After doing that, everybody would just be in shock. As one of them would say this, specifically, um, Mirko. We, we did it! As all of them would basically celebrate knowing that they defeated, you know, Mash Kirillite and the beast that, you know, they're, like, you know, the beast that she has summoned. As Izuku would say this, well, that was, uh, uh. As Izuku would basically, you know, fall to the ground, as 
you know, all of them would basically notice Izuku basically, you know, um, you know, knocked out. As, you know, Ida would basically run up to him, as she would basically, you know, bridal style, um, um, bring him there. Basically, like, you know, carrying him there. So, after carrying Izuku there, one of them would say this, specifically, you know, All Might, is Izuku okay? As she would say this, I think so. I think he's just a bit tired. Let's just let him sleep. Izuku looks pretty sleepy. And so, he would basically, you know, um, just be knocked out. In his mind, Izuku would see, for the last time, all three of his heroic spirits that helped him on his journey. Specifically, Jack the Ripper, Lancelot, and finally Kukulain. They would say this. So, this is the goodbye, eh? As Izuku would say this, it seems so, Jack. As you say this, well then, just be careful there. And by the way, maybe use protection next time. He would basically, you know, wick at him as Izuku would say this. Yeah, <laughs> he would basically start to laugh a little bit, being Izuku, as, you know, um, Kukulain would say this. Yeah, um, bring a beer to my funeral, I guess. Or at least create the little, like, gravestone for me. <laughs> he would basically start to laugh a little bit as he would say this. And maybe drink a, you know, a bit of, like, Irish whiskey next time. To always remember me, got it? As Izuku would say this. Um, yeah. As Izuku would look at Lancelot. Lancelot would basically walk over to him as he would basically, you know, grab him by his shoulders. As he would basically say, you know, basically sounds like, you know, like, da, da, da. As, as Izuku would hear, instead of, you know, those, like, those grunts, you would just hear, Izuku, I'm happy for you. Just be careful, and don't make the, and please don't make the, the you know, please don't make the same mistakes as me. After all, I was my king's downfall. As Izuku would say this, don't worry, Lancelot. I will not. And besides, I'm not really the type to cheat. As, he would basically laugh a little bit. As, all three of them would start to go into the light. As, he would say this. Well, it seems that the Throne of Heroes are not really the patient type. Eh? As, one of them would say this. Yeah, it seems so, said Kukulain. As, Lancelot would say this. Yeah, it seems so. They would say goodbye to Izuku and say that I hope that we can see each other next time. Maybe in another life. So, they would basically disappear. As Izuku would wake up in the hospital, seeing that everybody is there, including his, you know, large ass harem. As Izuku would be greeted to a large hug by all of them. As Izumi would say this, Brother, you're okay. As Izuku would say this, uh, You don't really need to do that, and besides, I'm a bit tired, so. As Izumi would say this, Oh, yeah. You probably are. As Ida would say this, Izuku, you're okay. So, are you? As Izuku would say this, yeah, I'm pretty much fine. Ugh, I'm just a bit tired. So please, guys, just let me sleep. As Izuku would say this, not Izuku, I meant everybody would say, um, sure. So, as everybody would start to leave, well, Izuku would say this, hey, um, um, as Izuku would basically start, you know, um, a little bit, you know, starts to become a little bit red, as he would say this. Um, Ida, you can say, as she would say this, oh, really? As all of the girls would basically start to, you know, mumble, as they would say, lucky. As Izuku would say this, yeah, um, I just want you to stay with me for now. As she would say this, oh, um, sure. So, after closing the door, Izuku would say this, thank you, Ida. Thank you for everything. As she would say this, yeah, but my my crest is not here anymore. As Izuku would say this, well, it seems that my quote unquote quirk, uh, <clears throat> sorry about that, wait. it seems my quote unquote quirk has truly become a quirk. As she would say this, wait, really? As Izuku would say this, yeah, well, let me just explain what happened. So, after explaining, she would say this, so. They really are gone. As Izuku would say this. Yeah. But they did say that they're proud of me. <laughs> hey. 
Ida? Now she would say this. Yeah? Izuku would basically tell her to basically come a little bit closer. As she would basically do, as Izuku would fully kiss her. After getting kissed by Izuku, she would say, Uh, Izuku, what did you... As Izuku would say this. Come on, you are my master, after all. I mean, you're not anymore, but I still consider you as one. As she would say this. Uh, uh... She would basically start to, you know, blush a little bit. As all of the girls would basically be there listening to all of this, as all of them would start to become a little bit angry. As Izuku would say this. <laughs> I know that all of you are still there, so here, as Izuku would basically, you know, um, you know, um, how do I say this, basically, you know, um, just to hug them, or basically, you know, just to, you know, all of them to basically hug him, and maybe even kiss him, so they basically come out of the door, as all of the, you know, half of the members of Class 1A and Class 1B would basically, you know, um, basically come out of the door like, like a literal flood, and they would basically, you know, um, do some smoochy smooches. So, yeah. So, this is going to be the end of the series. So, before we leave, guys, I'm going to be talking about the, well, wait for a second, the epilogue. So, let's begin with the epilogue, shall we? So, Izuku is now, even though he's not technically a hero, he's now considered as one. Because of his, you know, randomly acquired quirk, it allows him to basically, you know, hmm, it basically allows him to basically, you know, um, make babies, and these babies can get, you know, the quirks that literally from the parent, like, for example, Izuku and Ida, or Izuku and, you know, Bakko. So, Izuku would marry a lot of women, like, for example, All For One, because All For One somehow, you know, um, how do I say this? She broke out of prison, basically, as all of the heroes are basically, you know, basically telling her to get out of there, as she would basically explain that she's never gonna go back into the prison until she gets to marry Izuku. So, yeah, so, after getting married to Izuku, and then many other girls like Ida, and Bako, Todoroki, even Ochako, well, all of them would basically get a kid each, each of them gaining quirks from Izuku and Bako, like, like, for example, Todoroki's um, child would have, you know, the fire and ice type quirk, but also having the ability to, oh, I don't know, basically having the ability to basically summon in hero spirits themselves. Yeah, that seems like an overpowered ability, or for another example, Ochako and Izuku's kid would basically have the ability to, you know, having the same ability as Ochako to basically, you know, um, um, change gravity, not really change gravity, but more like, you know, touch anything and make them zero gravity, but... She also has the ability to basically use the powers of Atalante. Or for another example, like Izuku and Bakko's child, aka a boy, seems to have a quirk which is, you know, Bakko's explosion quirk and a mix of, you know, um, Sigurd and also, um, hmm, 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 wait for a second, and Billy the Kid, which allows him to basically summon in a gun named Thunder and basically, you know, shoot up the whole place like a fucking cowboy. So yeah, so each of these kids would basically, you know, um, or at least some of them, specifically mostly girls, and and I mean a lot of boys, I mean, the, like, Izuku, most of his children are mostly boys, and some of them, like, you know, girls. So, yeah, let's just say all of these, you know, boys that were currently, you know, um, in, let's just say, like, you know, um, high school now, let's just say they're pretty popular. So yeah, so, and for him and also all for one, they somewhat has a, you know, they somewhat have a somewhat good relationship, even though all for one is sometimes preferred to, you know, let's just say, make Izuku submissive, and as for, you know, Izuku and, you know, Shigaraki, um, they also have a great relationship, but thankfully she, you know, has these special gloves that are made specifically for her, that she, that allows her to basically, you know, use all five fingers, but, you know, doesn't allow her to basically disintegrate anything, so thankfully, she's safe on that one. So, as for, you know, the reason why they're allowed to basically, you know, um, stay as citizens, specifically, you know, all for one and Shigaraki, well, it's because of Izuku. Because Izuku knows about Shigaraki's past after, you know, learning about her from, you know, a little bit of text messaging, 
Well, Izuku some a little bit like sympathizes with her, so Izuku would decide to to you maybe you know um how do I say this bend the rules a little bit and let her get out scot free and ask for all for one while she was basically you know basically what happened last time but I basically told you about the explanation why but like all for one is basically out there so yeah so because of this this is basically the good ending so yeah so this is going to be the end of this series so yeah so before I leave guys. Um, I'm going to be having a rest week of like, you know, two weeks as usual, and I hope to see you um, about then. So, yeah, so I hope you like this series, and I hope you like the video. Comment and subscribe, and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye bye!